dams. They're such icons of river blocking permanence. But really, they have a lifespan just like anything else. They're all destined to eventually live out their usefulness, silt up, and become waterfalls. Unless, of course, we take them out first. This is a story about the power of art and the role it played in the second largest dam removal project in history. The battle began 20 years ago on a dam in Washington State on a river called the White Salmon. The story begins with a film clip back from that era. There have been many efforts to protect some types of endangered salmon here in the Northwest, but a meeting tonight in White Salmon, Washington, is the beginning of what environmentalists are calling the biggest step toward that goal. Cindy Hamill was in White Salmon tonight, and she joins us now. I understand that meeting brought in uh, federal officials. And that's right. It's the first time the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has um, come to a small town like White Salmon to discuss an issue like this part of President Clinton's decision to get the agency to become more responsive to the public. The Condit Dam has been here at White Salmon River since 1913, supplying energy to nearly 13,000 homes and keeping salmon from reproducing. We have to redefine our definition of progress. Dam Dancer is one of several environmentalists who want the dam torn down so endangered salmon can get upriver to spawn. It's 80 years ago. Um, progress was one thing, you know, and kind of dam was, uh, was the thing to do. You know, we need energy in this area. But now uh, we can look to other ways of, uh, of getting energy. Put the salmon back in the White Salmon River. Residents and environmentalists rallied outside White Salmon Park before meeting with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Inside, the agency listened to testimony from residents regarding the dam and salmon runs. It's not producing much energy, and it's a waste, and we'd like to see fish passage. FERC is preparing an environmental impact statement and will decide whether to renew Pacific Corps' license for the dam. We've taken a look at the issue of fish passage, and we don't believe at this point that, uh, that there's a sufficient biological justification to do that for the cost that's involved. But environmentalists and some biologists don't agree and whether or not tearing down the Condit Dam will help replenish endangered salmon depends on who you talk to. I guess it's done uh, properly and, and completely that it will show that the, that the um, best thing to do for the salmon and for this area as a whole economically will be to uh, get rid of the dam. Tonight's meeting is just the beginning of a long process, a long process, a long process. A long process, I'll say. It began before there were cell phones, before there were digital cameras, before kite surfing. It took 19 years. FERC is uh, supposed to submit the environmental impact statement by the end of the year. Cindy, what are the chances that the agency will tear down the dam? Well, it's really too early to tell right now. FERC is just beginning its uh, research. But um, they are happy that it's just gone this far. They see the envir environmental impact statement as a huge step, and they're optimistic. Um, but Pacific Core doesn't think it'll happen. Doesn't think it'll happen. Pacific Core doesn't think it'll happen. Back in 1913, a dam was built on the White Salmon River. I'd been to a ton of hearings in my day, and I wanted this one to be unforgettable. One that would tell Pacific Corps, the feds, and everyone who came that we were damn serious about wanting the dam out. We needed to create some momentum for dam removal to even be considered as an alternative, which it was not at this point. So, I rounded up my daughter and her second grade friends, and they staged a breach of the dam as their testimony. And when I saw the effigy of Condé Dam come crashing down that night, I knew, I knew its days were numbered. It just shows the power of art. It just shows that, uh, and I think that, that had an effect on the people that were there too. Because most hearings are very dry, they're boring, they may be pseudo-scientific, but here were the kids.
pressure to save seriously depleted salmon runs may lead to the demise of dams all over the region. One dam on the White Salmon River could be the first in line. After 85 years of work on the White Salmon River, plans are for content to be torn down to make way for long since depleted salmon runs. Demolition supporters say it can't happen soon enough. And this is going to be a model for how to do things like this, and there's other dams that are um, coming up for relicensing that block salmon runs that are getting silted up, and so we're going to need to know how to do something like take out a dam, and so this is going to be tremendously instructive. Dams all over the northwest are being considered for destruction. Time may have passed them by, especially dams like Condon, built before the days of fish ladders. Whoa, let's back up a second. We went from no way dam removal to yes, way. How did we get there so quickly? Well, we had a magician attorney on our side named Catherine Ransell, and she was magnificent. I mean, no one had ever really thought about dam removal before the late 80s, early 90s. When we filed that initial intervention in 1992, FERC had never even said it had the authority to order dam removal. All the organizations that we had asked to intervene with us in the proceeding brought their representatives to the public meeting that we had about what the environmental review should be and they all came and spoke in favor of looking at dam removal as an alternative. So that was really important. And you know the kids of the community participated, they had built you know a great big replica of a dam and broke through the dam and that was really very cool. I mean all that was very inspirational and necessary for FERC to see that the community supported it. And FERC finally said, yes, well, the tribes and the agencies say that dam removal would be the best biological option for the fish, but it's too expensive. This is what our studies show, that it would cost upwards of $100 million or something like that. We had to figure out how we were going to get the expertise to actually challenge those figures. And so we knew that this guy, Dennis Gathard, was an engineer who had worked on the Elwha dam removal proceedings and that he might be able to help us and we asked him and he agreed to do it and um, he looked at the situation there and he proposed that it might be able to be done for like 12 million dollars and not a hundred million and when the company saw that it was interested in talking so Sierra it was 18 years ago that you ran through the dam. You were in second grade at that hearing. What do you remember about that? Um, I don't really remember a lot. I just remember painting the salmon white. <laughs> <laughs> and how does it feel now that you know the dam is actually going to come out next week? Um, I'm really excited. It's been a long time and as my whole life growing up I remember my parents telling me to hope like a coho. We care about salmon in the Northwest. It is our iconic um, animal, if you will. Um, we worship them on some level. We eat them. We, we really love to see them pushing upstream against all odds. And that's what a coho is doing, pushing upstream against all odds. And that's what we did. There were six dam removal enactments over the years. And they were just one component of a massive and sustained activism by so many inspired and passionate people who wanted to see the White Salmon River run free again. So what these uh, salmon pageants did was to reinforce all that activism and to ride point, so to speak, on the front lines of consciousness change. Because I think uh, historically that's always been the highest purpose of art, is to create a field for monumental and never before seen things to happen. Things like uh, giant sized dam removal. That's my son Nick. And the battle for dam demolition has been the background music playing since day one in his life. And now he's 16 and my kayak teacher. The White Sam is his favorite river, of course, and pretty soon he'll be able to witness the breach of the dam for real this time.
Cool. I mean, you'll be the first one. Is it? Have you ever done any first descents of a river before? But I've never done one that's quite like this. This, this piece has never been seen before. You think you can handle a drop like that? Well, with the dam opening up, that'll uh, that'll make it possible. Um, I think we're uh, yeah we're looking at a uh, pretty dramatic uh, uh, distance here, but uh, with the river able to flow through, um, I'll be able to ride it on. You can see any salmon on the way that are anxious to come home. He saw lots of salmon, all right. And we'll get back to the biggest art breach of all in a minute. But first... After nearly 20 years of waiting, and with the big event just a couple of weeks away, I had this burning desire to somehow get into the tunnel that had been drilled through the dam. I just had to experience the reality of it all, that indeed, once the last 10 feet were blasted out, the river would be released from captivity and be free-flowing again. It was totally illegal, of course. But late one Sunday afternoon, when all the workers had gone, I hiked through the woods, climbed down the scaffolding, and entered the hole in the dam. A few days before, I had witnessed some of the 600 or so endangered Thule Chinook salmon captured below the dam and then transported above. This was the original strain of pale colored salmon that gave the river its name, white salmon. And when they were released above the dam to spawn, I knew the river's lifeblood had been restored and victory was very close by. And it doesn't get any better than this. This is it. They're going to do what they do and that's spawn. Hopefully they have lots of uh, juveniles and they're successful and they live their life. As I kneeled barefoot over them in the icy water, I knew I stood in the circular flow of a wild and sacred rite. A rite that after a hundred year absence, once again be enacted each year on this river about to be resurrected. As I walked inside, all the world's ills suddenly condensed within me. All the ravages of the earth and her creatures done by man, all the injustices we've loosed on one another, everything focused in on this one place, this one healing that was about to happen. And in that moment, looking literally at the light at the end of the tunnel, I experienced the full human potential to truly heal the planet if enough of us just decide to activate ourselves. I was so happy. I wanted to jump and scream in gratitude, but I didn't want to rouse anyone. I knew my joy was better saved for the day about to come. The day when the river would explode through this tunnel of freedom, art would finally emerge as reality. Hope like a coho. Been doing that for a long time, lots of us. It's an insane, unquestioning hope. Almost like a knowing. And finally it's gonna pay off. Today, October 26th, is the blast. And it's the most exciting day of my life, no doubt about it. I can't wait. Let's get this <laughs> It says 1913 to 2000. What did it take so long to get this thing out? Would you Why? like to comment on that? Yeah, like how come it Can took... Can I use the F word? <laughs> <laughs> took so long because Klickitat County held things up for about 10 years there with their million dollar legal campaign to uh, prevent dam removal for who knows why? Five minutes Where's away from the blast, what? Um, how you feeling? And, and it strikes me that the time <laughs> unbelievable. Really the, the backdrop unbelievable. of all of this. It took about two years to build right. on How many years? Uh, as we borrowed the river, it Plenty. served our customers and our community. You'll hear the detonation. You can watch it on these screens. I'll listen to the elders singing. Oh, that was so beautiful. Oh my God, calling them home.
god. What's going? Oh my god, Phyllis, it's going! Look at this! Look at it! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Look at that, look at that. I have to see somebody run those rabbits. It's running wild. It's running wild. And then things got really exciting. Pacific Corps gave us hard hats, not as cool as this one, and safety goggles. And we got to go up on top of the dam and watch the action. It was like watching the purging of God's own bowels. What would happen if you were in a kayak right now? Would you, would it, would you just like... Would you just, Holy shit, man. That's a big hole. Stuff? That is a big hole. Even you wouldn't kayak this way? Oh my god. Hundred years! Look at it go. Look at it go. Oh god. god. Oh, incredible. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. Hey, we did it. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Look how we didn't have to blow it ourselves after all. I had no all. idea there'd be that much water. Look at that. Can you see right now? Can you see right now? God, feel that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Feel that. The river's singing. It's just singing. It's like the river knows what it's doing. It's like it's like it feels it. It knows it's finally been it's finally been unleashed, freed. And look at it go. Oh my God, it's amazing. Long may you run. Long may you run. Hold on until the battle. Fix your rivers where we can Salmon spirit, salmon dream Our fate is linked to your own We have a prayer and we'll sing it till we're done It's long may I'm out here on the giant new sandbar that is formed at the river's confluence with the Columbia, made of all the sediment that has been stored behind the dam for the last hundred years. And I'm recalling our last artful act, done on top of the dam less than an hour after the breach. It was a ceremony of sorts to honor the necessary sacrifice that occurred that day of the aquatic life in the short stretch of river below the dam, and to welcome the salmon home back to their wild and resurrected river, running free once again from its source on the glaciers of Mount Adams all the way to its confluence right here on the Columbia River. We're going to take one of our original salmon sticks and we're going to, uh, we're going to say goodbye to her and we're going to put her in the water <laughs> and she's going to head out there to spread the word that this river is free and her salmon can hey. come home. All right, baby. Go <laughs> get him. All right. Go get him. Go get him. Woo!